So today we're looking at property investment um, and how as architects and technicians we use our skills uh, to create wealth for our clients. Uh, so this particular project is a um, shop with, well it's this one here in the centre, it's a shop with two floors above. Um, as you can see it's, uh, let me just pull this up. You can see it's pretty run down, it's uh, a bit wrecked certainly wrecked inside as well uh, this is a little restaurant inside on the ground floor uh, doors up to a mini cab office and then a studio above so uh, it is you know ripe for development as you can see what the neighbors have done here they've added on an extra floor so uh, no problem really with planning to add an extra floor but, let, but let, let's have a look at the condition of the property and you'll you'll see uh, where we are. Uh, I'm going to switch to optimized photos uh, to get an idea because it'll be quicker. But here we go. This is one of the neighbours. They did a, a complete revamp. And they um, demolished the entire shop and residential units above and did a very modern build. Uh, yes, they got planning and it looks great, but uh, if it's not necessary to demolish all of the shops and residential, then because uh, you're adding on an extra couple of hundred thousand here, and maybe that's not the thing to do. Uh, so let's get an idea what the neighborhood looks like. Um, you can see it's all mixed, but definitely uh, going up is. Uh, shouldn't be a problem so this is our this is our shop this is our premises here uh, we're going to go up one floor and we're going to make as many units as we can so at the moment it's three units it's a shop that goes all the way back um, as I say a mini cab and a little studio at the top and it's quite tiny it's only about four and a half meters wide and uh, it's, it doesn't go back very far the shop does but not on the upper floors um, have a little look and see and have a look at the back you can see you can see it's not very attractive uh, all it is is vents lots of restaurants in the area and the flat roofs and all these uh, massive vents for uh, food etc um, right so and I have a quick look inside and you can see it's you know it's 30 or 40 years since it's had a coat of paint and being modernized so this is coming up to the first floor up the stairs little mini cab office here um, again you can see the condition so uh, Lou waiting room mini cab office that's it uh, go upstairs a bit further you've got a studio flat which is basically a bed little tiny bathroom little tiny kitchen uh, again in pretty pretty poor state so uh, yeah it's uh, up into the attic uh, usual thing roofs being patched up a bit loads of rubbish uh, a few photos taken from the top floor gives you a better idea of what the neighbors have done see this one's been extended out on the first floor uh, that's the neighbor on the left to get loads of ventilation stuff etc and now we're down in the shop um, as in well it's a little I think it's a it's a, well obviously it's a restaurant but um, my recollection was everything was pretty greasy in there and uh, I didn't like the feel of it at all uh, so you can see it's a little bit grubby uh, as I say, lots of grease. Uh, you had to be careful you didn't slip and fall. So it's a uh, pr pr pretty. It's well, it's it's not a restaurant I'd like to eat from, having been in the kitchen, etc. But this is this is what it is. Um, so this is the conditions inside prevailing uh, on this property. Now, uh, just get through the photos. There we go. So we put the photos aside and you've got a fair feel. This is the back of the property, by the way. Um, this is the back, you can see it's a bit of a mess. Uh, this is all one floor for the, where the uh, restaurant was or is. And you can see on the upper floors, 
uh, as I say, it's they they don't go back. They're quite tiny. These uh, the, the mini cab office and the little studio above, and nothing in the attic space. So what we're going to do here is we're we're going to go up a floor and we're going to see if we can come back. Uh, so. As I say, it's good you get a bit of perspective. Have a look at what the neighbor's done. This particular one, they've come out a bit on uh, one level here. Uh, this one's come out on two levels. And again, they've come out on the top. This is a bit of a monster altogether. They've come up, uh, they've got the four floors. And as you can see, they've created terraces. Again, created some sort of terraces here. And then they've boost it again now that might even be a possibility to do that but um, we're not going to look at that at this point in time but let's have a look at the floor plans now so you've seen the outside at the front you've seen the back you've seen the inside uh, so now what we're looking at is the floor plan this is uh, inside in the shop go in that's your shop, that was your toilets, come on in here. That's a coal store, this is the kitchen, this is storage, and this little section was uh, more chairs and tables for eating. So it's not a huge restaurant, uh, but uh, they're making the best use of the space because it's long and narrow. Uh, first floor, as you say, coming in the front door here, <coughs> and um, it's straight up all the way bit of a landing there there's uh, another staircase to take you to the second floor but here on the first floor you have the minicab office the waiting room and just a toilet etc so if we carry on up the stairs here uh, we come up come out here we got a little tiny shower room toilet uh, little kitchen and <laughs> Uh, bed lounge it's a studio so it's all combined so as you can see now you're getting a fair idea about the property but so let's have a look now start to have a look at what we actually did uh, so on the ground floor uh, we looked at the shop and uh, whether we started considering whether we would do better to uh, subdivide um, the, the shop as in don't give the whole thing over and it's it's a, there's an argument there for keeping a big long shop and store at the back on the ground floor and no residential or you could actually carve it up into two units uh, by getting a shop towards the front and a flat at the back so let's have a look at how we did that so we kept the original shop the front section and <clears throat> then we cut it off and we put it I'm going to zoom in a bit uh, and then we, we just all we did was a basic small retail shop put a toilet in uh, nothing more and then uh, kept the entrance but we've obviously started to move the entrance around as in once you got in deeper so we need to get upstairs but it's not like before where you just went straight in and up the stairs now we put the stairs here on the right where you turn and go up and with any kind of subdivision these days you have to provide for cycles and bins so in other words uh, because this is a terrace property it has to be done within the building so we can't get the bins outside or the bikes so we have to accommodate inside so what we've done is you go in the main hallway uh, you've got bins and bikes here storage and this takes you upstairs to the upper floors and this one takes you in this door here takes you in so unit one was the retail shop unit two here we've got a two bedroom flat uh, so we got started off with the bathroom and incidentally when when we start laying laying uh, these kind of properties out we it's trial and error initially but after a while there's a, there's a reason why we have to have things in certain places meaning there's usually backed up like in this case we needed the bathroom first rather than say a bedroom and a, it'd be nice to have a bathroom in the middle uh, but that doesn't work out for us because we need for example, we need light coming into this bedroom, and we get that from the floor above 
here. Uh, if the bedroom was nearer to the entrance, uh, we'd be entirely underneath this living room, which means uh, no chance of getting light in. So, uh, as I say, there's reasons. Uh, it doesn't. It starts out we just do trial and error, and then we, uh, as we develop the floors, we realize. Yeah, as we do the first floor, we realize we've got to change things around a little on the ground floor. So this is what we ended up with: a bathroom. Uh, for the bathroom, we it's because we're looking at a nice kind of modern styling. Uh, it's you know off the floor pan, off the floor sink with a vanity unit, uh, tub. We'll probably have a shower in there as well. Uh, but in the in the bedrooms, we can see first off there's a roof light here uh, that's coming in here from the roof above. Uh, another one here, you're going to need mechanical ventilation for the actual air and I would certainly be looking at doing specialist lighting throughout this unit because we want to make it look bright and light and certainly not gloomy like it's a subterranean uh, uh, flat. Right, so if we move towards the back. You so say you've got you come in, you got your bathroom, you got a double bedroom, and we use a double bed uh, to illustrate. We always have to ask, make sure we get storage for wardrobes and so on. So you've got it here. You got the next bedroom says two double beds, and then towards the back, what we've added was you got a kitchen, living area. Uh, so you get your couch and you know. Uh, it depends you do a breakfast bar if you want to have a little bit larger kitchen and so on with a breakfast bar or you want a table and chairs do what you want but the space is there to move it around so to get light here lots of light into this room we added a uh, a nice large roof lantern you can see it here on the roof uh, and then we also decided to add uh, a roof terrace so there's a little back stairwell which uh, you can pop in there and the design on this again you can make it nice and light modern fresh contemporary uh, little little pop up there and out onto the roof and what you got is you got nearly three meters by five meters of roof terrace with balustrade now given the look at the surrounding area above the chances are that this balustrade will be a little bit higher than normal and you can screen it or you're using opaque glass or you're going to screen it so that you don't have to look at all the rubbish on the other roofs etc so you've got your roof terrace and we have put down decking here uh, so that's the look all right so back in again so in in here down you've got a fabulous two bedroom a modern two bedroom flat on the ground floor at the back and it'll be nice nice and light and bright this this will really help the hallway you've got the uh, the, these large <coughs> glazed sections in the in the ceilings, uh, which will uh, give uh, more than enough light for the and, the and of course the rooms are spacious, rooms are quite spacious. So it's a it's a lovely size two bedroom flat on the ground floor, with a roof terrace. So now if we go upstairs, uh, this is what happens. You come up, you're on the first floor landing. This would be unit three, which is another two bedroom flat. This one's laid out a bit different with the bathroom at the front. Another double bedroom. Note we have storage again. Note that we've built in pan off the floor. Uh, vanity unit rather than uh, just sink and pedestal etc. Shower. Uh, probably with the tub. Uh, you, you get sh a combined shower and tub. This is never great where the tub overlaps the window a bit, but again, it can be screened and, and, and done really well. Um, as I say, bedroom, the bed and the side tables demonstrate the size, bit of built-in storage. We had to play with this a while to get the design right. And again, now it's a kitchen for two, so uh, whether you want a table and chairs or a little breakfast bar, it's up to you. Uh, Again, because of fire regs, you need to uh, actually put a door into the habitable rooms. Uh, I'm not even sure if we're going to get away with this here. We might have to pop a door in, uh, but we'll, we shall find out. I'm not even going to look at that right now. I'm looking at the design, but like I say, we might need to have a door in here to separate the kitchen from the hallway to do with fire regs for the communal area which is this staircase 
So go down here. Uh, the area represented in green is where we're extending the first floor. Uh, and by extending, we managed to get another bedroom and we get a living area, uh, which is a great size for, uh, for another flat, for a two bedroom flat. It's a little bit less than downstairs, but nevertheless, it's still a decent enough size. And again, we've uh, opened up with bifold doors and you got a nice a few meters of terrace again. So uh, the roof terrace is important to get it in. It's a contentious idea from the planning viewpoint. In other words, people if people complain, we generally don't get permission for it, even though we go high with the balustrades and make it opaque or screen it. We generally get refused, but we'll, we're basically trying for it. And on this, on the first planning application, and we'll see how it goes. On the uh, so that's a two bedroom flat on the first floor. So if we come back out and go up the stairs here, uh, we're going to come up the stairs. We're going to end up on the second floor. Uh, we're going to come up here actually. Yeah, we're going to come up this way. So on this landing now, we have the entrance. Let me just zoom up a bit. With the entrance to unit four and five. So four being the flat on the second floor and five going up to a new floor on uh, that we're going to add on. So on unit four, second floor, we more or less mirrored uh, the downstairs with uh, the downstairs first floor unit with by doing very very similar now here i have put the door in uh, so it, i think that's an omission there so that's going to have to be done i'm quite sure of that so here we have done it and we've created the kitchen and the living area and i've had to build uh, build in a bit do a little bit of an indent so as to provide light into the bedroom below uh, uh, but it, it still works. It's giving it's giving giving light and it's giving ventilation. Uh, ventilation would be essential. But um, again, a gorgeous layout here uh, on the on the second floor. And of course, it's a one bedroom rather than a two. So we had a two bedroom on the ground, two bedroom on the first. This is a one bedroom, and with this one bedroom, you get a terrace again. So, I mean, it's a all done modern, contemporary feel. It's going to be gorgeous. So, now, this part of the staircase and stairwell belongs to Unit 5, which is the top floor. And, of course, all of this is new because we're adding on. And uh, up you go. You're coming up here, and you've got a big old landing here. We've kept the walls more or less the same because it's... The format's already working so well on um, the first and second floor. And it's always good to keep the plumbing on top of each other, yeah? Beds on top of each other, uh, in certainly in flats. Uh, so here we go, and we've done the same format, just a slightly reduced on the sizing, uh, enough uh, to get... Uh, I still get a one-bedroom flat out of it. And we've got the roof terrace again. And like I say, we might get refused on that. But what we end up with on, on, on the whole is um, reduced shop, uh, two bedroom flat behind. Now it can, this one can be altered again. We can bring the shop to about here, make the shop bigger and drop this down to a one bedroom flat. So we haven't decided about that yet. Client is still uh, looking at stuff and uh, they're going to make a decision if we want to increase the size of the unit. So basically all that means is that we push back the bike store and the bin store and make this unit bigger uh, and then make it a, small, a one bedroom uh, flat. So that's the retail and the flat on the ground floor. Two bedroom flat here, one bedroom, one bedroom. Uh, now, that's a massive uh, jump uh, when you compare that to the existing plans, uh, which was basically uh, a really uh, greasy little restaurant on the ground floor, mini cab office, and then uh, a miserable little studio above. So, again, uh, you, you have to look at it for what it is, but... Uh, 
now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the numbers for this project. So to do that, um, I think what I'm going to do is bring in another program here because I've done some numbers I want to share with you. Uh, let's look at the finances. So profit or loss. Okay, cost of the property, about 700k. Um, cost of development, around 300k. So we put the total investment at 1 million. Now, if we look at renting, uh, we got two two bedroom flats and we check the numbers on these and we're about 3,350 per month uh, on each flat. And that's because of where it is. It's near a very popular market called Brick Lane and it's in a very vibrant part of London. That's a lot, uh, you know, the word a mix is really fantastic. And a lot of young people love to live there. And of course, you know, you can do flat share and so on. But the rents are high, are higher than some parts of London. Uh, but it's, a, it's, like I say, it's a very vibrant and growing uh, community there. But anyway, uh, having checked on Zoopla and Rightmove, uh, these, are the, uh, these are the average um, cost to rent within Bethnal Green in, in North East London. So 3,350 a month. So you'd be looking at two, a two, two, two bedroom flats will give you a return of 6,007. And then you have two one bedroom flats, um, which is slightly cheaper or less. And it'll give you a return of 4,006 per month. The shop unit, because it's substantially reduced in size, uh, 1,500 a month. So you've got a combined monthly income of 12,800. Or an annual income of 153k. Um, return on investment. There you go. 15% plus. Uh, now that's that's in my view that's uh, double plus uh, the average return on investment uh, on rental property. So look hard at these numbers. Now if I was you, I'd take a few photographs. Uh, of your screen. Now about selling, right? Well, if we look at selling, uh, again, using Rightmove and Zoopla, uh, we tag the property prices, two bedroom flat, average 575K. So if you sell the two flats off, you get back 1.15 uh, million. Uh, if you sell the two one bedroom flats, you get back another million. If you sell the retail unit, you're looking about 300K. Total sales, 2.45 million. Investment, 1 million. Profit, 1.45 million. So almost one and a half million pound profit on one deal. Now, come on. I mean, it's gross profit. Obviously, you're going to pay tax and so on and so forth. But what a brilliant uh, investment. One million in, uh, six months, eight months later, you're looking at one and a half million profit. Now, this is how we help our clients to make money from property so if you like property investment keep an eye on our videos uh, that we produce because we're going to be doing every now and then we're going to be doing some uh, videos of this nature we show you we show you how to make money from property or how developers and people with a few quid uh, can make money from property okay hope you enjoyed hope um, hope you enjoyed us sharing because uh, that's what we're doing today this is to help stimulate and uh, show you how people make apps become millionaires quite young just from property uh, investment a good property investment I should add uh, but there you go renting uh, you're making a fantastic return selling you're making a fantastic return and the key of course is in the uh, development and the key is um, getting your designers your architects to uh, look at the property and come back uh, with uh, you know, some some pretty good plans. So, as I say, from a, a, a greasy little retail unit, a mini cab office and studio, we ended up with uh, five units, which is one decent little retail shop. Again, nice and contemporary, and uh, four flats. Uh, okay, hopefully you got some value in this lesson. Hopefully it's opened your eyes to property investment in London. Um, don't forget to subscribe or at least at the very least give me a like uh, for my efforts to help you so that's fine I'll see you all in the next video thanks for watching